six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here with Matt Flieger from Viscosity Oil. Matt's going to have a short conversation with us today and help us understand some of the labeling that you might see on engine oils and what they actually mean. So Matt, I know when I go to dump oil into a piece of equipment that I have at home, I just kind of look at the engine and it says like 10W30, right? I have no idea what 10W30 actually means. Sure. Um, so what, what does the labeling on engine oil actually tell us? Well, that's, that's a great question because many of our consumers and even ourselves are looking at those numbers and we think in, eh, they're pretty much all the same, oil's oil, right? Well, no, it's not. And, uh, and if we go back to saying who really drives the quality of these fluids, we need to understand maybe who's representing that brand of fluid. Well, the manufacturer is going to set your higher standards. Um, the manufacturer of the machinery cares the most about how that machinery is going to perform and last. Um, the, they have the biggest vested interest in their brand uh, other than the dealership and the dealership selling that to the consumer. So if you're going to go buy a 10W30 oil or maybe your most common diesel oil today is a 15W40. Oftentimes the question is, what do those numbers really mean and how similar are they? Well, those numbers represent the grade of the oil. The SAE sets the grade of the fluids. Um, the 15 means something, the W means something, and the 40 means something. So um, it's very, uh, we, we like to have this conversation with end users and dealers to say, let's make sure we understand that we're putting the right oil into your application to make sure that your engine's getting the right protection. The first number is going to represent how the oil is going to flow when it's cold. And so if I'm going to use a 10W versus a 15W, which one do you think is going to be your better cold weather fluid? 10. The 10. What do you, what's that W stand for, Neil? Many people think that it's weight and it's actually winterized. Okay. So the first number when it comes to a multi-grade oil represents a 10 winter or a 15 winter. So that oil will pump very effectively at a certain temperature so that you're gonna get proper startup lubrication. Dry starts, cold starts are gonna harm those internal components uh, quickest uh, over time. So it so if I can interrupt, when that says then like say 10W30, if I'm in a really cold climate and I think, oh, I want easier starts, the, the W already tells us that this is made for a cold climate, so maybe picking a lower viscosity would not be smart? Be a good idea. You know, if you're in, if you're in okay. the plains region of the country or you're in the northeast and, and your temperature is very unpredictable and you have how many months of cold, you might have as more months of cold than you do hot weather. So let's make sure we're getting cold weather protection. The lower you go with your first number, the better cold flow you're going to get. Okay. But then you want to consider that second number. What does the second number really mean? It means how that oil will protect at the high end of the heat range. So if you've never pr pulled your operator's manual out of that glove box or behind <laughs> the seat or taken the plastic cellophane <laughs> off of it, do that now because you open that book up and that's really the, that's the gospel for that, that machine. And, and you go to the maintenance section and it will give you viscosity grades based on temperature. So the second number is going to determine how well that oil will protect your machinery in the heat of the season. Okay. So there's a very particular additive that goes into that formulation to change the viscosity as the temperature rises. The polymers are contracted when it's cold, otherwise we call them VI improvers, viscosity index modifiers. And so when the oil's cold, the polymers are contracted. As the oil heats up, the polymers expand. And what that really does is they fill up the space between the oil molecules so that your oil doesn't thin out. So should I always be like following the manufacturer's recommendation to the T or is it okay for me to kind of take my environment into account and deviate from that a little bit? I think your climate region is going to be your uh, a big deciding factor okay. with what oil you're going to use, but make sure that you're still buying a quality fluid right. because um, even though you might be buying a 5W40 or a 10W40 oil, that doesn't mean that they're all created equally. That's just a grade. 
And, and what we've been experiencing in this engine industry um, nowadays, and I've seen some of your videos, Neil, you talk about tier four. We have a lot of heat. Oh, yes. Yes. Obviously. We're, we're, we, we've, we've had a lot of change ups in our oil formulation based on those tier four engines. And so what we want to make sure we maintain with our lubricants is a stable viscosity. The API sets minimum standards for all engine oils that they at least have to meet that minimum certification. Um, so there's a lot of companies that will make an engine oil and they will still uh, change up their recipe and they will change up their ingredients to make a acceptable fluid but not necessarily meet the OE standards okay. because the OE is setting the higher standards. So when we go into to recipe in a engine oil then, um, a lot of us would think, oh, 10W30 is a 10W30, they're all the same. How, how much recipe is actually in a bottle of oil? It's a great, uh, a great conversation to be had. And you know, aside from being a chemist and knowing exactly what each recipe looks like, I'm gonna say that uh, it can really vary. You could have uh, a very lower priced oil, have a higher percentage of base oil, because base oils are a lot less expensive than that other remaining part of the container, which is your additives. We would call that, the, that's the, the, where the magic happens. <laughs> your performance additives really do some fancy stuff and allowing that oil to be able to go a, a I like to say go the distance, but you really you want it to make sure that the oil is maintaining its characteristic through the drain interval. Because sometimes we neglect our drain intervals, don't we? Um, and so we want to make sure that when we've put an oil in our machine, that it's going to carry us until we change it back out. So by increasing our additives, lessening some of our base oils, we can get a ratio that allows our oil to, to be a lot more robust and, and get us through to the next service. So there's a misconception there that I would have had. So you would say in a, in a bottle of oil, the additives are actually the cheaper portion of that bottle than the base oil is. Just the opposite. Okay, the additives we are more have expensive. A, we have a higher percent of base oil, okay. which accounts for a lower portion of the cost. Okay. Our additives make up a higher portion of the dollar amount because of the technology that goes into okay. those additives. So if we have an oil that has more dose of additives or better ingredients, um, our price is gonna be a little right. bit different. So if your so, goal was to mix a cheaper bottle of oil, you would cheap out on your additives basically. Yes, you would, you would down treat your additive package to change the, the retail point so that the consumer, because the consumer is oftentimes looking to buy based on right. price, um, we will adjust that percentage of additives in base oil. So in, in the base oil itself then, base oil is not necessarily one big giant drum of oil, right? Correct. There There's are different, different levels. base oils. There's different base oils. And even within a specification, say 10W30, you can yes. have different base oils within you, 10W30. You can, you can meet different grades of oil by using different base oils and different qualities of base oils. Some will be more refined than others. It all depends on what your end result wants to be in your formula. So when it comes to actually knowing what's in that bottle, it is a complete and total crapshoot, pretty much is what you're saying. It's, it's somewhat of a mystery. So you have to really be thinking about who's putting their stamp of approval on that yeah. container. And if I was an owner of any of these major manufacturers machinery, and they come in many different colors, um, it's the manufacturer that's gonna drive your quality of fluid right. If you get further away from the manufacturer's fluid, it becomes more of an unknown, am I getting yeah. the right oil for my machine? So we're not apt to oftentimes to want to like trust the brand, right? but on, kind of seems like we don't have an option. Well, yeah, there's options, but um, I don't think there's too many options if you want to protect your high dollar investment mm -hmm. because this equipment is not getting any cheaper um, when we buy it new. Um, and I think it's fair to say that uh, the older that machine gets, the more wellness we need to give it. Um, so don't get further away from doing the right thing if you want that machine to still serve you well until you say, you know what, it's time to replace that old girl and I'm just gonna leave her in the back shed and not use her as much. But yeah, we, uh, it's a shame that the further away we get from the machine being new and pretty, 
we tend to put lesser quality um, fluids and also filters on that machine. Right. So that's a little bit about what might be in a bottle of engine oil. So if you have any parts needs for the machines you've already got, service needs for the equipment that's out in the field, or you're looking up to pick up an additional piece, or if you need some oil to go into that engine, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.